Welcome to Adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah! Dungeons and Dragons! So, apologies for missing last week, everyone. It was a confluence of incidents, and that's all we need to say about that. But we're back this week, and uh, we have almost everybody. We are short one Starla who had the nerve to post a sad face about this post, uh, about this episode, because she's so sad she's going to miss it while she's spending three weeks in Europe. Oh, <laughs> oh. <Lord> Starla. <laughs> oh. With her family. Oh, the torture. Oh, yeah. oh no. The real she question looks... is, did she take her dice with her? Oh, <laughs> we should tell her to get on the Hangout call. So, right. <laughs> but we do have Chush Schubert as Otter King. Hello, hello. Jenny Meltzer as Cadence of the Water. Yeah, hello. <laughs> James Meltzer as Ket of the Sands. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> Mark Kilfoyle as Alaric Copperbeard. We're going to need a bigger argument. <laughs> I can oblige. Uh, and Vivid Muse as Amethyst. Hi, y'all. Now, before we get into the recap, I want to just briefly acknowledge that this is episode 100 of this campaign. Pretty cool. Woo! Woo Obviously, there are more than 100 episodes total of the So Many Levels brand <clears throat> because we've done a fair amount of one-shots and episodes that got counted weird and, of course, a whole <laughs> Curse of Strahd campaign. But still, it's a milestone, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so before we jump into the recap, uh, I do have a, a special announcement. Uh, and in particular, this is for uh, uh, Cadence and Ket. For too long, they have been forced to use artwork found from the internet rather than having special character art that matches the ones created by friend of the show, Natalie Metzger. So I am announcing today that we have brand new character portraits for Ket and Cadence. <laughs> Woo! Let me uh, bring those up. It's so uh, roll for initiative to see who, who gets theirs first. <laughs> uh, 13. Uh, wait, I got to look at my initiative bonus. Nine, nine plus six, so I beat you. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's, uh, let's, if I can pull up the right one here. All right, so uh, here's Cat. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is awesome. Check out this fancy fellow. Oh, my goodness. That's so awesome. Cute. Awesome. Wow. Nice. wow. Yeah, man. He's super <laughs> Dude, man, that Dialing. is so awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I'm very glad to hear that. And uh, we can, uh, everyone should. Uh, um, uh, say thanks to uh, Natalie Metzger, too, who is an amazing artist, does great stuff, and is very fun to work with. So, but next... Amazing. Uh, Cadence of the Water. Can you see Cadence? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Thank you, Natalie. That's oh, cool. Hubba, hubba. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Awesome. That so is so now cool. Thank you. Thank matches. you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie, so much. That's <laughs> awesome. It is. It made me get all misty. Aw. Awesome. Here's to 100 more. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how long this particular story lasts. But, you know, hey, you guys might all die tonight. You never know. Probably not. Though. I don't think so. Not all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not all of you. Not all of you. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about what happened last week, though. So uh, still uh, stunned, shocked a little bit from your whole encounter, first fighting Zoreth and Jinxie, and then once again being temporarily reunited with your friend Mugen, and then uh, losing Mugen, but also not regaining Melikanth, you uh, 
had to decide what to do next. And you decided that the first of the many tasks before you that you wanted to try to tackle was the issue of a powerful celestial who was assigned to guard the tree and prevent it from being regrown. And so you headed in that direction. Along the way, you found a couple of things. One was that there is apparently another young gemstone dragon, just a little one, uh, who apparently can move through the amber as though it were, you know, insubstantial and uh, was interested in all of you, but a little, a little too afraid to uh, emerge and speak with you openly. But uh, uh, he and Cadence had a little bit of a chat. You also discovered that there is a veritable army of Madrons, the strange little constructs, lawful constructs that you had once encountered building a device in the beneath the barrier mountains, but now apparently assigned to uh, clip any new shoots of growth that might be coming from the world tree. And there's lots of them, and they also have apparently guardians, which you only detected hiding against the wall and didn't really ever see in their uh, non-hiding form, as well as other little scout type things. But making your way through various tunnels, you briefly uh, emerged into what seems to be a basement and found another Modron there, but this one didn't act quite like the others, simple-minded and obedient. This one seemed to have attitude. Uh, introduced himself as Crux, revealed to himself to be from a place called Gehenna, and essentially told you he's been trying to corrupt the Celestial, whose name is Custos Vigil, and offered that you, uh, you know, one perhaps uh, mean method of attack, so to speak, uh, for uh, your attempt here, and uh, suggesting to you that if you could convince Custos Vigil that the vow it had taken was a waste of time and that it never should have made it in the first place and that it had just wasted thousands of years here. If you could convince it of that, it would be helpful in that regard. That's what it wanted and suggested. And you were not sure about that, but uh, you don't know necessarily what the other options are. You're making your way into the city because as you discover, as you emerge what seems to be above ground, that the entire city that once surrounded the base of the world tree is still here, but sealed in amber, including the people also sealed in amber. Uh, before you made your way much further, uh, Autarchy chose to uh, stay behind, uh, perhaps to not antagonize the Celestial, um, and decided to hang back and hang out with his dominated mummy lord companion, because that's a thing now. And, uh, <laughs> and so the rest of you made your way to the temple at the center of this city and found Custos Vigil, currently in the form of a halfling, who had been uh, maintaining this post as it swore to do, uh, but also taking the time to honor all of the sealed citizens of this, you know, frozen city. And you engaged in conversation with Custos, who was friendly and welcoming, but pretty convinced that it was doing the right thing in upholding its vow. And you made several arguments back and forth, and finally started to make a little bit of headway when you there was a suggestion that sealed as it has been here with the tree all this time, it maybe doesn't really understand what's happening elsewhere. And so it essentially accepted an offer to let you show it psychically some of what has been happening. Uh, but before you could actually start doing any of that, Nera was suddenly sucked through a glowing magical portal that disappeared after her. So I think we'll pick up with you guys reacting to that a bit more. Oh my God, man, where'd Nera go? Who the what? What the what? Again. Oh man. This was with... that guy, I know it was. You, yeah, I think she and Zareth probably had a date planned. The... 
which just goes to show that she be. was lying to me, like I said. I mean, there has to be yeah. something we can do to protect against this. Archie, you're not even here, man. We will jump back to uh, Otter Key in just a bit. Um, He's so shocked. He's not even here. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I think uh, Custos will just say uh, that was a powerful spell of arcane magic just then. It has drawn her away to another plane. Yeah, man, I hear the breakfasts there are delicious. <laughs> yeah, and they have this macaroni and cheese with, like, fried onions on it or something. Yeah, man. Oh, oh man. the same, same allies that uh, put Mugen with us and then without us. And also set uh, Melikanth in some safer place. But then Allegedly. one by one, we're all getting pulled away. We kind of don't need each other, though. We can't I'm avoid. sure she's okay. She'll be she'll be fine. Don't worry <clears> about <throat> Nira. She's a big girl. She can take care of herself. It'll Unless be okay. She's with Zorath, in which case... Well, then know. Zorath can take care of her. It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. We've seen how Zorath takes care of things. That's what scares me. Don't worry about it, man. Chill. Chill. We got here. We got, we got Custos here. It'll take it's okay it's all good don't worry about it you know it's in confusing times such as this that it's useful to have a code <laughs> what do you mean like a ganga word or something well if you like what i mean is uh guidelines that you follow for your behavior it's easy to get all turned around when you don't have a compass, so to speak. Also dangerous to have a code. Yeah. One can get too used to the idea of not having to make decisions of your own, of being able to abdicate that to people you respect, but don't necessarily even have to agree with. Decisions, but it is a decision every day to continue following the code. But I am not forced. Question? or bound by my vow, except by my own determination to follow it. Let's see, oh, uh, <clears throat> you're a thinking being. You're smart, powerful, intelligent, you're far-seeing, but you're not using any of that. Well, no, Alari, now, come on. Let's not go back to that place already. I did agree that if you have things of the outside that you would show me, I'm willing to, to watch, to see. But I make no promises. Hmm. Who's got the best memory to give up first? I have, I have some memories that I would like to share with you, Custos. Very if well, you, then. If you would be so, so kind as to probe my brain. Uh, Custos uh, uh, walks up to you, but uh, they're in the halfling form, so just asks kind of gestures, just like if you could, if you would uh, come oh, down. Oh, yeah. yes, of I course. Can. I get Thank down you. on all fours, like, like <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My, my tail wagging a little and, bit. And touches your, your cheek. And then you find yourself not merely thinking of this memory, but actually there. Okay. So where are we? I got, okay, I got two memories that kind of just morph together. Okay. So the first memory Custo sees is after we were freed from being petrified, and it's, it's Custo sees the destruction of Ushbithra, sees mm. the massive spirit turtle giant thing just smashing everything and and citizens and just innocents just fleeing for their lives from this destructor that's you know smashing their city mm -hmm. and then from there the memory goes to before we were petrified and it just goes over and over rapidly me and cadence trying to go through the tree back home but it, it taking us any place but home over and over again. And the memory is of me seeing the heartbreak 
and sadness on Cadence's face each time she realized that the tree did not take us home. So you find yourself there. Like, how do you, how do you envision it? Are like when in your mental picture, mm -hmm. you find yourself as though you're really there. Are you, on the ground level in the city looking up at this enormous turtle spirit are you floating? yeah I, are you on its back or no i we're ground level we're right down with the people um you know as they're f sort of just when we got there and the people are sort of fleeing past us and we're sort of staring this thing down trying to figure out what to do so as it's causing this destruction mm -hmm. so that's that's the memory that i that i have of all this destruction being caused and the, like the feeling is just of sure of me being like terrified mm -hmm. of this thing and of what it's what it's doing to, to everything and the feeling from me seeing uh cadence's you know sadness and heartbreak over not being able to return home is just the feeling that i'm experiencing over that is just like i let her down like it's just disappointment on my end mm -hmm. That's something that I did, something that I caused, just, you know, prevented her, prevented us from going home. So the, uh, you, you feel as though you're actually there, like you're reliving it, except that it, it's a bit like a dream because everything else outside of yourself is playing out like you remember. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're really there, but you are at once a bit separate from it. Right. And it's you're like, standing uh, there with Custos next to you. And in also Crux, who waves to you and says, Oi, hope you don't mind me making this a party line. Oh my god, this is this is the worst Christmas carol ever. <laughs> Custos looks up at the uh, the spirit and then around at the damage and definitely looks very concerned and saddened and then turns to you and says this destruction is caused by a fey queen from the Feywild meddling in the prime material plane with access to the plane granted her by interdimensional fissures caused by your friend Amethyst and access that she would have if the tree were to regrow as well. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that, man. <laughs> why, why did you want to show me this? I wanted to show you this because this is what this is what everything is coming to the the, the stolen moment us searching for it amethyst all of it is connected together and we're doing our very best to try and put it back but if we don't this destruction that we're seeing here is going to be increased a thousandfold and we're just trying our best to stop it, man. Uh, Crux jumps in and just says, You see, Custos, one of the things that I've heard your lot say is that you can recognize the tree by its fruit. Right? If you don't always know what's the right thing to do, you say, well, what's the outcome? The outcome right now of everything you've done is this destruction. Right? What you've done in keeping the tree sealed away like this might have been much better if you'd never done it at all. What if you were here, able to save all these people? Nah, nah, see? Trapped away like you are? Sworn that vow? Mm -mm. Just keeps you away from where you could do much bit more good. I like the cut of your jib, man. Uh, he offers you a high five. <laughs> that is that is exactly the point I was trying to make. He said it perfectly. So, 
we're jumping back to the the temple where the rest of you watched Custos Vigil touch Ket's cheek and then Ket vanishes. And then what Custos, is happening right now? <laughs> Custos says, do not fear. This is a metaphysical bit of magic. It would be difficult to explain, but your friend is safe. He is present within my mind, you might say, and he will be released soon. But I would allow each of you to make your case to me at the same time. So who would like to go next? I will. You, you want more of us to go into your head? Yes, it is what we just arranged. I understand that the circumstances of it are a little bit unfamiliar, but I assure you it's safe for you. No harm will come to you. I'll go. And, and you want us to just trust your word on that? Yes. Are you willing to grant that trust to us? And Am I not that doing so now about? by allowing you access to my mind? I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm a little concerned about the safety of this. We're trusting a lot. We don't, and do, do I know that Crux went along for the journey and he's in there with? No, I, you wouldn't have any way to know that. Okay. Okay. All right, so then that's half my reason for being distrustful of this. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how to finish that. All right, fair enough. So I, Cadence volunteered too, but uh, uh, Custos is looking back and forth between you. Go ahead. Cadence. Okay. And do you, do you kneel for, for them to reach your cheek? Yeah. Right. So, yep. as uh, as Custos reaches out and touches your cheek, um, for Alaric and Amethyst, once again, you see Cadence disappear, just like Ket did. Cadence, where do you find yourself? Um, the first, I have two, just like Ket. Um, the first okay. one is on the battlefield against the Shadow Queen, okay. and her massive existence, you know, just mm -hmm. hoarding over Mira's mountain and us fighting her and how horrifying it was thinking mm -hmm. that we might not survive when we still had so much to do. Mm -hmm. Just firing off arrow after arrow and not seeing much damage and mm -hmm. having no idea how we're going to even get through this and that it was just sheer dumb luck mm -hmm. that we came out of it the way we did. And Custo says I can appreciate the fear and determination that you all felt dealing with this situation and I absolutely can understand and comprehend that you might want to do anything you can to avoid this destruction but I would also argue that this destruction is the result of a powerful spirit from the uh, Shadowfell being brought into the Prime Material Plane, corrupted by it. So many of the battles fought on this day are the result of the planes crossing over into each other. When the planes well. intermingle, it causes chaos and destruction. She actually got there because of the renegade. How is that so? Tell me. Um, we found the piece of the renegade. Ket and I did many, many, many thousands of years ago. Mm. And when we met up with our new companions, they also discovered the arm and a large took possession of it sort of unwittingly mm -hmm. and had no idea what it could do. And he wished for the Shadow Queen to leave us alone and his wish sent her to another plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're flashing through these memories, uh, you know, uh, 
once again feeling as though you're there but it's happening so fast and Custis is there with you and then all of a sudden Crux appears too and just says just look at all the damage that has come from what your inexorables did to the renegade look at all the damage that's getting done now as a result if you lot could have just worked out your problems back then instead of sorting it out all of this could have been avoided but no, you had to swear a vow to keep it done just the way they wanted. And look at what's happening. It's just worse than ever. <clears throat> Here's a good point. Because did any of you ever wonder or think about the people who had used the tree and who were away from their homes and what would happen to them? And right from there, it goes into my other memory mm -hmm. of me climbing the tree over and over and over again for a muddled reason that I don't understand because I have to be somewhere. I don't know where that is, but I have to be there. And I can't get there no matter how hard I try. And there's just this grave disappointment mingled with determination as I keep climbing that tree and coming to places that are not where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And just that, just so much fear and sadness because no one should be denied the opportunity to go somewhere. So now we're back in the temple. Alaric and Amethyst, you're there still with uh, Custos. And Custos is offering a hand to either of you. Alaric, this was your suggestion. I understand that the nature of the magic is a little unexpected. It's a little weird to be sure. I'm not sure. What I can offer, necessarily, Amethyst might have something more appropriate. I don't know if it's appropriate or, or even convincing or what it is, but I'll, I'll give honesty and then I offer my face or hand or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you see that where, whereas Custos approached Cadence and Cat very sort of benevolently but unhesitatingly, there's a much more tentative quality as, as Custos pulls up and, uh, and, and reaches up to touch Amethyst's cheek. And do you know where you find yourself, Amethyst? All right, well, I think if you are oh are you uh, asking well, yeah i'm sorry i don't i don't mean to like i don't mean it like a rhetorical question i mean i'm um, asking you if you have in mind where you will find yourself yeah um since i don't know what cadence has shown um one of mm -hmm. i i probably will um ask to use another one as well but um the the memory that i think would be the most powerful is just on the on the battlefield where we had the the and I'm not going to remember the names of everybody, but the huge battle where it was the four battles coming at once. Mm -hmm. And we had all div divvied up, you know, who was going to fight who. Well, you know, instead of just the one taking up the full sky, it's like at some point Amethyst would have looked at this, just everything, the full battlefield of all these four battles going on before we got swept away. And um, just relaying that that was what we anticipate to be the first battle we know it's not the end that there are going to be more and that they're going to be on a much larger scale because we haven't been giving in and we haven't been failing so far so they're going to have to throw more and more at us and there are going to be more people trapped caught in the crosshairs the longer it takes us to seal to do what we think we have to do the more people that are going to be harmed and it's not just the people that are harmed today but i want to flash to like the other battlefield uh that 
comes to mind for me is ages ago, <laughs> but I don't know, maybe a couple months in game, um, where we were at Villa Nocta and the, the goblin army mm -hmm. was coming because of us. They were coming because of something that we had done. And, you know, we negotiated our way out of that. But the image I want to share is of, you know, me sitting in the back of that wagon with those little refugee children that had been captured and were being held and that we were returning back, if I remember correctly, correct my memory, mm -hmm. we were returning them back to Villa Nocta to be reunited with their families or to be orphans or whatever was going to well, happen to them. certainly rescued from being hostages. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, but just their faces as we're passing through all of these different armies and these soldiers and just like the impact that it's having on them and how it's going to reflect in their world later on. So it's not even the kids today that are suffering. If there's anybody left, it's going to be future generations going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that I would just want to convey that, you know, the, the scale of it is so much larger. I don't know. Can I talk to Custos at this point? Uh, yeah. So you're basically experiencing these like, like dreaming of a memory, but Custos is there with you. Okay. Um, but I would like, you know, just, you know, with these images that I'm showing, I feel like we could take a moment and I don't know the magic of it. I don't know how it would be possible, but these people whose, whose time you devote, not worship, but caretaking of, you caretake the people here that are frozen in amber. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to unfreeze them and get their counsel again? Because a lot has changed. We've discovered a lot of things. There's a lot of bigger pain going on in the world. And for all of the people that are trying to prevent it from being fixed, if we work together, to allow the tree to grow but restrained with pruning and caretaking like the kind the kinds of things that that all the powerful items in nature have to have there has to be someone to look over them and caretake them and instead of just restricting them and causing all the toxicity why can't we just work together i'm a druid i'll, I'll help with the tree i love nothing more than restoring nature to its natural order i volunteer myself I know an arch druid that might be interested in helping as well, as long as, as well as all of these big, powerful players. You know, we we don't care about trinkets or gold or or fame or anything like that. We just want to fix the harm that we've caused, and we want to minimize the pain for the people that are frozen in amber here, that chose to be, and the little kids that are caught between two armies. And then the, the residents of the fields that had crops growing before these four armies fought these each other and destroyed God knows how much. Those people are innocent and they their needs should be bigger than ours. And that's what we're trying to see. So Custos is listening to all of this and nodding in all the right places and, and just kind of takes your hand and just says, Your generosity and your kindness is never in doubt. And one of the things that I've always admired about you is how you are so able to always think of others. But it's also true that there are times when the stakes are so high that it is impossible to save everybody. Agreed. And I have to believe that the vow that I took was for the good. And no matter what harm may be coming in the meantime, it is to avert an even greater harm. I have to believe that. And then Custos uh, or Crux appears and just says, just admit it you made crux, a mistake crux, crux stop i don't know what We're your back motivation in the temple is now and it's just uh. custos and, <laughs> just just custos and alaric 
I hate Crux. <laughs> hate. He really is the crux of the problem, isn't he? Uh, so, uh, Alaric, you are the last one left here in the room. Mm. Alone again. Well, Custos I is hope, there. I hope my friends are safe. They they've are. Come, yeah. Well, they've come to be family. In absence of having one of my own. Is that what you wish to show me? Sort of. Little things, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, let's get this doohickey over with. Touch my forehead or whatever you need to do. Very well. And so as they reach out to uh, touch you on the cheek, uh, where where do you find yourself? Underwater. It's a celebration. Freedom. The Kuotoans are thanking us for what we've done for them. These little buggers are amazing. They they see things totally different than anybody else I've ever met. But they're not invulnerable. They're not powerful bastions of law or evil or good or anything. They see the world because they believe in it. They believe the world should exist and be better. I think we're all better because of it. But they were almost wiped out, turned into mindless slaves. Quite literally, I think, in some cases. We stepped in. Stepped in to help them. To help everything. Because we can make a difference. You see, from what I've seen over the last few weeks, gosh, months, I don't even remember how long anymore, the whole world's coming to pieces, shredding, holes are appearing, sometimes caused by people who have their own agendas, but most of them just appear, not with any particular order. Not for any good reason, just holes. And when these holes open up, and now we move to the actual illithids themselves. Mm -hmm. When holes open up, there are all kinds of things that want to take a peek on through. Now I understand that some things, some beings can just do this. That's not going to be solved by you standing around a tree, trust me. Might be solved if you go and face them, but that's another issue altogether. Point is, they make these holes, or the universe is making these holes. Now, later on, I found out that there's a reason for that. There was something that was holding the universe together. Surprised the hell out of me to find out a tree was doing that. I still don't understand that part, and I probably never will. But it seems kind of important. Now, these little guys were set free. Spirit that dominated the river, or the lake, I guess. It was changed afterwards, reborn, given a, a new outlook on life, you might say, working with it, changed into millions of little buggers rather than one big one. The change isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it's rebirth. Sometimes it's making something better out of what was a crap situation. I hope I'll get back to that lake someday, but I got some other little fellas to show you first. And we flash back to underneath the mine, where there's a hill being built by a whole pile of Modrons, screaming out, It's the law! You see, these little buggers, they don't have a choice. Maybe they have a little bit more to do, I suppose, if they were given better orders, but... They stuck to what they thought they knew. And as you can see, all they're doing is making things worse. They thought they knew what they were doing. They held fast to it. They believed strongly in it. But they were wrong. And we closed that fissure. <laughs> I say we. I had not much to do with it. Those folks are tied up with the opening and closing of the fissures. I, I don't even understand how that part works either. 
but I know the closing that fissure made that place better. And there was another one, too. Opening to nowhere. You know, I don't know much about this planes business or how the universe works or any of that. All I see is a, a big blanket that's being torn apart in the seams. And the seamstress who can fix it is being held up by someone who doesn't see the big picture, but thought they did. You've done a lot of good out there. There's no question about that. But the sort of evils that you describe existed before the tree was sealed away. And in fact, the mind flares were once a plague across all the plains, taking entire races as slaves, exactly as you describe. And they traveled easily and fluidly between any plane they liked when the tree existed. Their evil was exactly one of the things that was intended to be at the very least hindered by sealing the tree away. And also the tree was stable until the fissures were created. Yeah, well. And then uh, Crux uh, appears and just says, Look, Costos, you're seeing all the damage that's getting done out there. Just like those little Modrons, you're nothing but an automaton here. You're a tool of people who use you for their own ends. That's all you are. They program you, set you, and forget you. That's what you are here. Otterkey. It's been a little bit, maybe 45 minutes or so since your uh, companions, uh, you know, went on ahead. You stopped when you did because as you made your way in that direction through this amber coated city, you felt the feeling just of the space changing and it felt uncomfortable and it was only when you noticed your mummy lord companion stop moving almost like it had run into a wall and then you reached out and felt a boundary there and it didn't stop you. You could go into it. But you knew instinctively that your mummy thrall could not. Because you're about to step into hallowed ground. And you realize that this discomfort you'd been feeling was because whatever had made this hallowed ground saw you as profane. And that's where you decided to let the others go on ahead. How have you been uh, passing the time since they went on ahead? Um... Well, I wanted to try to talk to the Mummy Lord a little bit. Okay. Just in the sense of um, when the, the initial encounter it screamed essentially to the slumber was disturbed and uh, basically we would pay for disturbing that slumber. And uh, does that mean that this place was disturbed or were you summoned? Uh, you know, I didn't look up what language is actually it's spoken common is fine. Okay. So, uh, the, <clears throat> it says this place is not my home. 
gentlemen. My slumber was disturbed and I was brought here. And I fought those who fought me. And then you command me and I am bound to serve you for now. So, um, <clears throat> would you say you're from a different plane of existence and summoned to this point, please? I do not I fully understand. understand the magic that was used, but I was in one place and then brought to another that was very different. Mm hmm So, oh, this is not your native plane. The place we exist here is strange, but I sense tremendous energies here. Souls of the departed flood this place like a sea. Mm -hmm. And there is something greater here than any mortal soul that slumbers like I once did. Mm. Well, I had a proposition. I've never been fond of control. I have the ability to send you home, essentially. So I believe when I do that, this mad, these magics that bind us together will s sever. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to try to send you home. If that is your wish. I will gladly accept. And then <clears throat> I wish you to go back to your slumber and I'll go ahead and cast banishment. And uh, because it's not resisting, okay. you you conjure the magic, blinks out of existence. Technically, you still have to concentrate on it for mm -hmm. a minute. But yeah. when you do, the mummy lord does not return and you do feel your your mental connection cease. Cool. And then you hear a voice behind you. And you turn and back in the direction of this temple, but just hovering right at the boundary of where you felt the hollowed ground begin, you see floating in the air a ten foot tall winged humanoid form decked out in glorious, gleaming, golden battle armor. An enormous bow across its back and an, a long sword sized for a ten-foot warrior in a sheath at its side. And it says, I would not have expected you to release it so easily, Oathbreaker. Well, I want to use my divine sense and sense <clears throat> celestial fiend or undead. It's a celestial. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, this ability of control certainly wasn't anything I ever wanted and goes against. <laughs> everything to my core as, as as breaking that oath did but here we are I can still do some little things that'll and can still help things along back to a balance your companions speak with me in the temple hmm 
They aim to show me things that they hope will persuade me to give up my vow to prevent the tree from regrowing. Would you show me things as well? I can't imagine you would value anything I could show you. Um. Perhaps someone who would give up his oath is not the best judge of value. Hmm. Well, as someone who holds a vow, you certainly know the, the weight of it. I do. And the meaning of it. <clears throat> and the only reason I gave it up was because I saw that maintaining it was doing, was, was undermining what the original vow was intended to serve. Would you show me making that decision? Certainly. Approach the boundary. And so as you as you reach there, once again, almost a little bit like static electricity you can just you can really feel where the ma this magic boundary begins mm. but it uh, this winged figure sort of floats back down to where it's standing on the ground and holds out a hand just to where you have to do you have to reach through the boundary to take its hand okay and as you do you are not obstructed but you do feel it and you, as you touch the, you know, this, this enormous hand, suddenly you find yourself there in the crater with the dragon, not sure how to proceed and realizing the sorts of things that it wanted in exchange for the information you needed. And Custos is there with you. And it feels a little bit like a dream, but you're really there. And Custos looks down at you and says, Did your vow mean so little to you that you would sacrifice it for baubles? I took my vow essentially in revenge, but truly to stop deeper evil was the core of it. Initially it was a childish thing, it was vengeance. My mother was, was taken over and driven mad and killed my father and herself. And, and you know, I wanted to, to take vengeance for that root but as I went further in life I learned that the evil is was the problem it wasn't necessarily that specific demon lord and um, all of a sudden you're interrupted because uh, one of these little well you met you met crux so in that <clears throat> initial meeting but okay. uh, crux appears and just says vengeance now there's a vow for you, Custos. You want a vow to uphold? Revenge! Get revenge on the people who made you stay here all this time. And so we're now jumping back to <laughs> Ket. Ket, as you're standing there, no time has passed while we were dealing with everybody else. Uh, you see as Crux begins to sort of like stretch and reach out its arms like it's sort of 
um, you know, I'm, I'm imagining like an invisible bow flex, but it's okay. doing something to the, uh, environment here. And, uh, Custos looks a little bit confused and then just says, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Ugh. And just starts looking really frustrated. And uh, Cus and Crux just says, "There you go. Let that anger out. Roll initiative, Cat." Okay, dude. Uh, Fifteen. Okay. Uh, I I didn't prepare this. There's a lot going on, so I don't have everything as as up as I usually would. Okay, uh, so as you are watching, Custos is losing this sort of calm, benign demeanor, and you're seeing more of some of those flashes of anger that you had seen before. And as you see it flare a little bit, there's a tear, almost like one of the fissures that you've seen so many times, but this one is red, and emerging from it is a strange creature with two heads and enormous, like, grotesquely long arms with no hands, but instead enormous hook-like claws. And, uh, and, uh, and Crux says, yes, there's that anger! And it rushes at you, Cat, and it is going to uh, slash at you with its hooks. Oh my god, man. Is this a, a demo boogan? A 16 to hit? No, that misses. Okay, and then um, that's uh, that's just a 12 to hit. So it's slashing at you with its hooks. Um, and uh, you see that it's just... This thing is frenzied with rage. This creature is hulking... Both of these heads are just, the face is just distorted in this horrible snarl. <sighs> and uh, uh, Crux just said, I called in a few friends. We need to work this out, don't we? Oh my so, god. Custos, you're mad. You're mad the Inexorables made you stay here all this time. Used you, they did. Uh, and what do you say, Cat? That thing is so ugly, man. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on right now. <laughs> yeah? Do you say anything? I... Uh, you can you can make your attack, too, if you want. You can... You, you have a turn here. Oh, okay. I'm just saying you can... You, you have a turn. You can do right. as you like, but you can also say something. I mean, why is he getting so mad, man? He should be glad. I, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, uh, what is, is his? Why is his anger causing these fissures to open up? What is going on? Crux has said this anger was beneath the surface all this time, and I just needed you lot to start weakening his resolve, and I can bring it out. Jesus, man, what are you? Are you are you taking your turn, or are you just like this? Thi this thing's going to attack you again. I mean, it's so ugly. It needs to be something cuter, and I polymorph it into a bunny or try to. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> the wisdom saving throw. <laughs> okay. Uh, it that's just a nine. Okay, that fails. So, so. Uh, it turns unfortunately into a gross-looking two-headed bunny, but a bunny nonetheless, yeah. and. Uh, 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 Crux just says, well, that's not fair. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's just, it was so, it was so, you know. It's, I mean, it's not, it, I mean, it's a bit of an improvement. It's got a little more cute nose to it now, noses, but hey, you know. And uh, uh, Custos, though, is like not even really paying attention to you or this creature, but just looking at Crux and kind of even just like scenery chewing a little bit and just saying... I never, I never asked for any of this. I, 
wanted to do good for the universe, and I was told that this was the way to do it. Well, it's okay, it's... man. I mean, people make mistakes. It's all right. You just, just chill out, man. Uh, make a persuasion check. I mean, you're just making it worse. Uh, 16 plus 15. All right. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm just double checking. Does, do they do, do they get a saving an additional saving throw for polymorph or no? Um, or they're just stuck. Let me double. I think they're just stuck for a minute. <laughs> oh no, concentra concentration up to an hour. Okay, so they yeah, yeah they don't get to. Uh, okay, well, nope. you you solved that, uh, at least for now. For now, yeah. Um, uh, Crux, uh, um, Crux, you know what? Uh, he he is not a hands-on guy, so he's not uh, doing anything. But he just says, yeah. A mistake. All a big mistake. You didn't know. That's fine. But now you're going to keep your promise to the people who made you make a mistake that's caused you to waste thousands of years? All right. What do you I mean, say, Kat? What, what, why, are, why are you so angry, man? What is your stake in all of this? Is it just because you've been, like, watching over him all this time? I'm not angry. I'm exhilarated. I'm finally getting my payday. Oh, okay, man. I mean... Okay. Custos <laughs> just said, It's true. I have all this time, all the battles that I've missed... What I've sacrificed being here? Was it all a waste? I, I don't know. I mean, that I, I don't think so. I mean, you thought you were doing the right thing at the time. You know, it's it's not a waste if you, you think you're doing something good. And I mean, for maybe a long time you were doing something good, but now it's your chance to do something even better. Go ahead and make another persuasion check. That is a 7 plus 15, so 22. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, so, uh, Custos l l hears you say that and kind of nods a little bit, and then Crux is looking at you really kind of angry and frustrated, saying, What are you listening to him for? He doesn't know any of this stuff. Look, you know better than anyone that the inexorables are law. Not good. And they have used you for evil. And you need to pay them back. And, uh, uh, what do you say, Kat? I just like, man, you just, you're just a little instigator, aren't you there, Crux? Like, why are you doing all this? I mean, you should just be an ice finger of death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let me just double check. I need to make sure I have the stats up for Crux here. Um, the con save. Uh, yes, but uh, there's some yeah, additional yeah. factors in play. No problem. Uh, uh, counterspell. Um, at, uh, let's see, uh, I think I won't, no, you know what, they, they know that, uh, they know that spell, mm -hmm. so, uh, they counterspell at 8th level, okay. and, uh, then they just say, yeah, and how do you like it, and, uh, finger of death back at you. Okay, um, I will counterspell that, but at 6th level, so I'll have to roll okay. for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, how do I... How do you do that? Let's, uh, uh, okay. So it's for you. It's your okay, charisma is your spellcasting modifier. So you roll that, and right. you have to get. Um, actually, let me double check how that works. You attempt to uh, the D, the DC is ten plus the spell's level. So I got right. So I, gotta, I, I, I think you don't actually get any benefit from doing it at a higher level unless it's right. above the level. The spell right. Level. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I gotta do. I gotta hit a seventeen anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be nope. That fails. Okay, so 
Go ahead and make your con save then. Oh yeah, my con save is from is a fifteen, which fails probably. Uh, actually, fifteen is exactly what you needed. So you. Oh, oh wow, okay. All right. So, I so as you, uh, I think you do. Hang, you still take half. Half. Yeah. 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 All right. Um. Uh, so, right. um, so that would be 30 necrotic damage. 30 necrotic? All yeah. Right. Uh, so we're going to cut away from there. Wait, let me roll a uh, concentration for the polymorph. Okay. Um, and that's a uh, 15. So yeah, that succeeds. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So we're cutting away. Um, it was, uh, Cadence that was next, right? Yeah, so Cadence, you are there with Custos and Crux. And uh, and Crux just says, think about it, Custos. You've had to be here all alone with no one but those little critters, those m robots that don't feel or think or care about being good or kind, no one to understand you. And a you see a tear open, but instead of uh, you know the uh, purple light that you've come to understand for these fissures, it's deep blue, and a creature emerges. And uh, roll initiative, please. Ah, uh, that's ten. Okay. Ooh. All right. This uh, creature stomps out, and it's weird. It's got this grotesque, distorted humanoid form, but, like, instead of legs below the knee, it's just these spikes, these claw-like spikes, and its eyes are black, but with dripping down the cheeks like black oily tears and its arms end in spikes where the hands would be too and it points one of them at you and you see the, the arms stretch impossibly shooting out at you like a harpoon and that's a 17 to hit uh, that is my armor class okay so it does hit and does Uh, 19 piercing damage, and you are grappled as this thing has embedded itself, like it's got barbs, and it's, like, hooked into your armor. Uh, and then it, uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, that is a 18. Uh, and 18 is a success, so you're going to take, um, uh, you're going to take, uh, seven psychic damage. I have the uh, resistance to psychic, so. You do, so you would only take three. Okay. Um, but as you see, it's stretched out arm that's sort of embedded in your armor sort of start to reel in and it drags you towards this thing. And as it pulls you right up to it, you can see in its face is just this horrible, empty longing. And it's pulling you towards it like it's just desperate to have something to grab. And uh, you, you hear Custos just say, it has been hard being here alone. My only time seeing someone I thought could understand me only came to oppose me. And uh, Crux just says, yeah, it's been rough, hasn't it? Is it worth it, really? Dealing with all of this solitude, all of this pain? Wouldn't it be easier to just give it up? What 
what do you see, Kate? Say, Cadence. You also have a combat turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to bonus action Misty Step okay. out of the grapple. You do that. Um, and I would like to get near Custos. Okay. With that and put my hand on him and just say, you don't have to listen to him. You uh, took a vow. And you believe in your vow. And he's trying to turn you against the things that you believe in. We came here for you to help us. But you don't have to do it his way. Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage. Natural 20. Very nice. And a natural 20. I'm not kidding. I'm going <laughs> to... Thank you, Unicorn Dice. Uh, it's meant to be. Yeah, I yeah. think with a double natural 20, um, you see this uh, this creature that had sort of started stomping towards you just start to, like, burble and melt away. And Custos makes eye contact with you. Had been kind of staring into space, not quite seeing you, but sees you now and sort of makes eye contact. And we're now going to cut over to Amethyst. Uh, Amethyst, you're there with uh, Custos and Crux, who you had just recently said, I, I hate Crux, kind of just gives you a nasty little wink, like, um, but just says, Custos, don't you want more than this? Isn't it unfair to ask someone of your stature to deal with nothing but this? You deserve better. You deserve more. And as, uh, as a fissure tears, but instead of this purple light, it's this, this yellow, this sickly yellow, and a creature emerges. And it is, once again, vaguely humanoid, but horrifically gaunt. It's just uh, dry skin stretched over bones. And you can see that it has these huge grasping hands with long fingers and claws. And as it opens its mouth, it's just this enormous uh, gaping mouth. <sighs> Roll initiative, please. Twenty-two. Ooh. Crap. <laughs> well, that means that you, before this thing has gets a chance to uh, come at you, you you have an opportunity to take your turn first. So I'm going to cast watery sphere. Okay. And it, um, it makes a saving throw, right? Yeah, it's a strength uh, 17. Okay. Oh, it just makes a 17. Shit. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, you see it starting to get sucked into this watery sphere, but it's just able to sort of claw itself out. Um, and as, as uh, your, your turn is finishing, Custos is just saying, I was created to do more than this. I haven't used my sword or my bow to slay evil in thousands of years. This can't be what I was created for. I was created to fight. What do you say, Amethyst? Fight with me. Ooh. Make a persuasion check. 16. 16. Um, so that does catch Custos's eye, but in the meantime, it is also now the, uh, this creature's turn. Um, and it rushes at you and tries to, uh, claw you and then bite you. Of course so it does. Yeah. So <laughs> first it only gets in 11 for the claw attack, so that probably doesn't hit you. Mm -hmm. Um, it does try to bite you too, though, and it get, does better with that one, gets a 22. Um, armor class 18, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is just six piercing damage, but also 
Okay, that was 3d8, and you're taking five. <laughs> five necrotic damage as this thing chomps onto you, and you feel it trying to just suck your life force out of you, uh, but it just, it, you were able to sort of rest it away and not take, uh, take too much, uh, not give it as much as it wants, but you can see it sort of just, its eyes are desperately hungry. It's just, it's, it's mindless at this point. It can think of nothing but trying to fill this cavernous need within it. Got it. And so Crux just says, you already fought with her once. How did that make you feel? It was made you feel alive, right? But you want more than that. She's trying to trick you. And, yeah, that's... So, can I say anything? Yeah, now it's your turn again. Yep. So this thing's still coming at you, but you can say whatever you want. <clears throat> um, I believe that we want the same thing. And if you'll give some more thought to, you know, a bigger picture, fighting with us, helping us, I don't think you were wrong all this time. I think things have changed, and I'm at fault for part of that, but I'm trying to fix it. And then I'm going to cast Blight on the thing that's attacking. Well, first make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, oh okay. So. Okay. <laughs> 11 both times. So okay. That's okay. faded, too, just like that natural 20 was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, so you cast blight on the thing. On the thing. Yeah, it makes what what saving throw? That is a uh, Constitution uh, seventeen. Uh, that's a ten. So no. So that's eight d eight. Thirty-two. Okay, thirty-two. Yeah, you can see it all. It's already withered, shrunken form seems to just get even more desiccated, and its ribs just sort of throb as its skin tries to tighten around an already gaunt form. Um, but Crux is just uh, saying, "It's like." See how good it feels to let these emotions out instead of just keeping them inside? You could have it all. You could have everything. You could bring your power and take whatever you want. All right. And so the thing is attacking you again. Um, that's a 16 with the claws. And then a 15 with the bite. So it is, you're, you're keeping it at bay for now. So far. <laughs> yeah. And Custos is just looking between you and, and, and Crux and just saying, I was meant for more than this. But things have changed. All right. What, so your turn again. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what Crux is trying to convince you for. I don't understand Crux's motivations. I don't like the way it's framed as you being wrong or having done something bad or having to get vengeance as a result of it. We're here to do good. And as corny as that sounds, that's why we're here. And so if there's some underlying thing that Crux is intending by unleashing all of this anger of yours, I just want you to know that I don't know you. I don't remember you very well. And I'm sorry for that. I would like to have more 
force in what I'm saying, more faith in what I'm saying right now, but I feel like that that's not something that you want. You don't want to unleash vengeance and do all of these evil things that it sounds like Crux is whispering in your ears. If you want to do good, if you want to try and make a difference, then just give us a chance. Let us try. Let us unfreeze the people here. Let us get their point of view since we're the ones, since they're the ones that are having to sacrifice their lives. Still, it's been thousands of years. Let's give them a new vote. Go ahead and make another persuasion check. Ugh, God, I really wish I had persuasion. Six twice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm I just terrible. I, I think what you're you're sensing is that uh, you. you you know that some of the rightness of your argument is getting through, but you see that there is a part of there is a part of Custos that wants more and has been frustrated. And part of that is being brought out by Crux. You know, it's unleashing it, so to speak. So, Alaric, as you're there, uh, uh, with uh, Custos and Crux. Crux just suddenly just says, Now, Custos, you know really why they put you here. You know, when they asked me earlier whether you had any weaknesses uh, and what uh, you were like, I, I said, you were the one they put in charge of this. And the way I said it to them made it sound like, oh, you're impressive. They put you in charge of an important job. But you know better, don't you? This is the crap detail. This is the worst job. And they put you here because that's all you deserve. And uh, a tear opens and it's just this blackness in it. And emerging out of it is a whole bunch of these weird little two-legged creatures with uh, Le Remora-like mouths that swarm out of it. Go ahead and roll initiative. Uh-huh. Uh, wow, that was crap. That's eight. Okay. I might roll that, too. Uh, but they don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so these things just flood out of it, and as far as you can tell, like, ten have come out already, but who knows how many there are, are coming out. And so uh, four of them get to you and, and, make, and try to bite you. So that's going to be 12. That's a 13. That's a 10. That's a 7. So you are evading them for now. They are not as individual creatures necessarily that threatening, but there's so many. And you see Custos, again, not quite seeing you or these creatures, but looking over to Crux and just saying, it's, it's true, I've had doubts, and that perhaps just shows that I, my resolve was not worth a better assignment. Perhaps that is why they put me here. Your turn, Alaric. What the hell do you think you're saying? <sighs> Fine, I'll take care of this myself. I'll use a bonus action to summon the axe. Okay. You can join if you think you're up to it. I know you are. I know how hard it was to get here, after all. I'm just going to start swinging away at these things. All right. Well, let's give it a try. Uh... Wow, it's been a while. What do I do again? How do I do all this stuff? Well, you have the okay. fancy new axe now, too. I do. It's the first time I get a chance to use it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And I think I just got my third attack. Yes, I did. So, swing away. That is a 27 to hit. 27 hits, yeah. I wish that was a natural 20. It would have been funny. Uh, that is a crap roll in that. That's so nine uh, slashing damage. Uh, so, you see that you, you uh, have severely wounded this thing it's not down but it's really really bad it's well, I'll take, squealing I'll take and snarling and limping i'll take a swing at another one since they're so right. plentiful i'm just mm -hmm. swinging away ah oh, damn it same thing 27 to hit. Well, oh, darn yeah i'm looking for a 20 i want to dig yeah, for I 20. Know. 
Sure. Uh, 13 uh -huh. uh, slashing damage that time. That one you cut in half. <laughs> now and a third it. swing. Damn it. 25 to hit. <laughs> uh, it doesn't. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that hits. I'm standing by myself, though, aren't I? Yeah. So I'll take my so, sneak attack damage. Uh, okay, so you could have had that sneak attack on the first one if you want. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, uh, let's see if that can prove that really bad damage roll. Where the hell is... How, uh, so how long has it been since I've any of this stuff? I don't know. <laughs> it feels like ages. Uh, it's only been two episodes, but we did have an off week. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's, it's, any it's addition of sneak attack damage will kill the first one from that. Yeah, well, from I'll that roll point. it anyway, just for fun. Right. Yeah. That's uh, 12 more points. All right. Yeah, definitely. That one is... is, is uh, you, you chop right through its mouth and all the way out the other side. <laughs> no, damage on the last one is a 15. All right. Uh, that kills it to uh, another one too. So just three blows, three deaths of these things, but they're just gonna, they're just still coming out. But uh, make a persuasion check. Wow, that one's rolling 16s today. That's uh, 22. All right. Okay, so um, as uh, uh, as Crux uh, is, is watching that, is just saying, you know, it's hard to get here because they knew they needed to make it hard because anyone who actually got through to you would just take you out. This party of mortals is strong enough to take you out. And that one actually looks like it stings Custos. Well. And, uh, and these things, uh, more, uh, six of them are attacking you now. Uh, let's go ahead and roll a couple of these at once. Actually, oh, and you know what? They have, they have pack tactics too. So that's going to be a 20, not not crit, but just 20. Cast shield. Okay. Oh, I forgot my regeneration. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, 17, which isn't going to hit with the shield. Right. Yeah. Uh, 20, but not going to hit. Actually, what's your AC with the shield? 21. Uh, yeah, these things could could hit you, but... But none of them do. You're, the, you see their Remora-like, leech-like mouths. <laughs> but deflected by the magical barrier you've created. It's your turn again. All right. I don't think I'd put myself against you any time. You're the last line of defense. I get it. They put their best person here. But now you're needed elsewhere. Because the world has gone much worse than they anticipated. And I'm going to stomp forward. And I'm going to try to catch as many as I can in a thunder wave. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a persuasion, uh, persuasion check uh, with advantage, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is 21. Okay. All right. And uh, and go ahead with that thunder wave. I think that so uh, there's... there's saving throw. Yeah, so there's so many of them that uh, that you you get like a bunch. It's like 15 square, right? Uh, 15, 15 foot cube, yeah. Cube. Yeah. So yeah, there's uh, nine of them in it. Um, all right. Uh, those two rolled pretty high. What are they trying to beat? 16. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Wait. These guys are terrible at this. So, what? What's the damage? It's only eight damage, but they're pushed back ten. Okay. Feet. Yeah. So you like they they go flying like you see they're just scattered, but it's a little bit like doing it a thunder wave in the ocean. You know, you push away the water for a while, but there's more just rushing in. Just want a little breathing room. Yeah. All right. And then. Um, uh, the uh, crux is just saying, you know, maybe you were once something, but you've been here too long. You lost your edge. If you were to go out there, you wouldn't do any good to anybody. All right. 
Your turn. You know, I've had just about enough of you. I'm gonna find me a crux. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna check something. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, cool. Um, is the crux within 20 feet? Yeah. And then I start to swirl the axe in the air, and I launch it at him. Okay. Because <laughs> that's one of the features. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man, I want that 20 so bad. Uh, that's 30 to hit. Okay. Uh, 30 hits, yeah. Okay. And that's uh, 17 points of... Uh, slashing damage. Okay. It reappears in my hand. I throw did, it again. Did you do the sneak attack for that first I one? I did or? not. That's okay. a very good point. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, that's pretty good so far. Oh, wow. That's triple sixes. So another 18 on top of that. <laughs> okay. All right. And second attack is only a 22. Shit. Okay. 22 does still hit. For only um, 14 points of slashing damage. So it was 35 from the first one, right? With 17 plus 18, and then another yeah. 14. Yeah. So 49. And the third hit, damn it. Uh, 25. To hit. <laughs> Just I imagine just you at level one going 25. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but there's a, I like special effects. Uh, there's. 15 okay. points of slashing damage okay. as once again it reappears on my hand. 54. Okay. Yeah. So just with these uh, swings with, you know, throws with this axe and it just lashes into Crux, who's. Uh, you, you see actually bits where it looks like the metallic body of this uh, Madron actually tears like cloth. And then underneath is just like darkness. It's so basically it's like a uh, gash, but it's just dark underneath. Great. You it's know. like a black hole wearing a, wearing a hoodie. Yeah. Uh, and then it just, it kind of turns to you. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see, what does it do? Um, it says, not very sporting to engage in violence instead of rational discussion. And it uh, points a finger at you, and I need a dexterity saving throw. Okay. I'm not very good at those, unfortunately. Uh, that's cocked shit. Uh, 16. Uh, 16 is actually a success, but you do still take... Let's see. 18 lightning damage. Woo! All right. Oh, I forgot my regeneration. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I take 12. <laughs> um, and then, uh, uh, so I think Custo, you, you turned Crux's attention on you, so he doesn't uh, say anything to Custos this time, but it's your turn again. All right. Um, hmm. Custos. You're probably one of the most powerful beings I've ever met. I hope to call you ally soon in the war that's to come. But first, let me rid you of a pest. Let's do that again. I want to, ah, 21 to hit. Okay. For um, 20 points of slashing damage. Okay. And again, just ooh, 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 whoosh. Ooh. Throw it again. Damn it. 14 to hit. That would even be a miss. Uh, 14 does miss. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Come back here. Ah, uh, 17 to hit. It's getting worse. 17, 17 does hit. Okay. And I'll take the sneak attack damage. That is uh, not as good as I hoped. 26. Uh, did you not do the sneak attack on your first one? I don't think you get it on all three attacks. Oh, did I do it on the first one? I forgot if I did. Uh, you said 20 total, I think. Um, on the first one. Yeah, no, I don't think I did actually roll on that one. Okay, so you got 20 without the sneak attack? Yeah, it's 2d8 plus 8. Okay. All right. So that's, I guess you can you can include it for that last one then. Okay. Uh, oh, crap. I've already... Well, let me just roll it again. 
think that was the same thing I rolled. Ooh, uh, 19. Uh, no, no, sorry, 20, 27. I forgot the plus eight. 27. Uh, so I think, yeah, uh, you hit that first hit again, and Crux kind of turns to you with another one of these big gashes. It's just darkness and void inside, and just kind of turns to you and says, ha, 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 and then this, another throw, and then it just, it basically cleaves again, and you see it's just got too many of these gashes now, and it's just saying, oh, bloody hell, and it just collapses into a singularity. Wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> uh, so, fantasy here. <laughs> Otter Key. Otter Key. You're there in the moment. And uh, Crux uh, has just vanished. But you see, look over at Custos, and Custos is just kind of staring a thousand yard stare and just says I don't know what's right anymore if if not my code if not my vow then what 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 could be right if my vow is not and uh, uh, a tear opens and a creature uh, comes out with uh, just these strange uh, spiky arm-like protuberances and just this uh, a face that just looks like uh, like vacant like a zombie and just wandering and uh, go ahead and roll initiative uh, soft 20 okay Okay, and it rolls nine. So, yeah, you, you get your, your first attack. So you basically see Custos looking kind of just forlorn, which and, and Crux is gone, but also this monster has just come out and seems to be sort of staggering towards you. All right. Um, uh, I think... Well, my first thing is be a bonus action to uh, give myself shield of faith, and um, it's looking confused. So necessarily want to automatically attack it. <laughs> um, but the last thing he said is being confused and. Uh, what you have is the reasons you made your vow, the spirit of the vow. That's what's important. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Persuasion. Plus nine. 22. All right. And so this, uh, did you finish your combat turn? You did the shield of faith and was there anything else or? Um, so I guess I'm going to hold an attack if it. Okay. Hold an attack if it comes and attacks you. Attacks me. Right. Okay. Well, it does. So you might as well go ahead <laughs> and uh, like it's, it's racing up at you and trying to go spear you with its spiky arms. But uh, you can go ahead and do your held attack first as it's prepared to attack you. I was just going to do a dodge action, actually. Okay, okay, okay. So it's making its attacks with disadvantage. Uh, well, one of those... Uh, with disadvantage, it is a 23. Uh, uh, but the other one would have been a crit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that is going to be... Um, uh, Oh, wait, no, I can just roll this. Roller for that. Um, that's going to be 13 piercing damage as it hits you with that arm spike. Okay. And then uh, the next one is I'm just gonna, a 15. So that. I'm guessing he's a magical creature, so that's a magical damage. Uh, it looks, yeah, it looks pretty. Uh, well, uh, 
No, it's not. Because I'm I resistant mean, to non-magical damage. Yeah, it's not explicitly no. magical. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's... Uh, that you would have the resistance there. Okay. So it sort of glances you, you know, a glancing blow with this, but it finds your 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 flesh tougher than usual and doesn't uh, do much more than a superficial wound. But you see Custos just saying, but the reasons for my vow, uh, but... Uh, how can I want the best for the world, but how can you ever know what's the right thing? And your turn again. Um, so I hold my action again to dodge, and <clears throat> while I say, <laughs> um, The um, the tree can be a tool of evil, but it is just a tool. It can be a tool of good, and we need to protect the things that are important and not destroy the good that it can do. And without its balance, all life will cease. That is the greatest evil there can possibly ever be. All right. So it's make the monster is making another uh, attack, um, and it's still at disadvantage. But this time, it looks like it's just trying to like grapple you in all of its spiky arms. Uh, but it is uh, with only a six, not gonna get you. Nope. Um, now so gonna give me. Did you? I, I don't think I had you roll a persuasion check for that last argument. I, I no, I did not. Yeah, uh, you can do that one with advantage too. Sweet. Oh, uh, that is twenty-five. All right. So I think Custos is looking directly at you now too, and just say, "But I have to have a code, and if." my vow is not my code, then what? It's your turn. <laughs> um, the spirit, the spirit of the vow, the spirit of good, and the spirit of laws, all to protect life. You swear a deeper vow to protect life. And I will continue to dodge. I don't think there's any spelly thing I can um, do. Actually, as you as you say that, you you suddenly see this thing start to just crumple and wither away, and the the fissure there just sort of fades and disappears like smoke. And then all of you find yourself back in the temple. And I actually I do have a. A map here, let me. Alright. Let me get Otter Key on there. And... and Crux is gone. And so you find yourself there in this temple before this enormous central area where the that first fissure is and the branch that grows into it and you see this figure of of Custos standing there in front of all of you and just shaking and looking at all of you and looking a very complicated expression. There's fear there, but there's also relief and joy and uncertainty. And you see the halfling shape gradually begin to grow into 
this enormous winged shape with the the golden armor that is all Otterkey had ever seen Custos as. And then the, uh, the, the voice rings out and it's resonant through this armor and then just says a deeper vow than to life, to the things that really matter. Otterkey, will you swear with me? Hmm. You know, I think that is the core of what my original vow truly was as well. I will swear with you. Together, do you swear as I swear to kindle the light through acts of mercy, kindness, and forgiveness? Will we kindle the light of hope in the world, beating back despair? Do you vow to shelter the light where there is good beauty and love and laughter in the world, to stand against the wickedness that would swallow it, where life flourishes to stand against the forces that would render it barren. Yes. Do you swear to preserve your own light, to delight in song and laughter, in beauty and art? If you allow the light to die in your own heart, you can't preserve it in the world. So I swear as well to be the light, to be a glorious beacon for all who live in despair. Let the light of your joy and courage shine forth in all your deeds. I swear this as well. I can uphold this vow. And it is done. And I shall do my part. Thank you to all of you for showing me a truer path. The tree must be unsealed. And I will do what I can but there are threats still to the tree that must be dealt with. I will devote my energy to preserving the tree's life force. But you must still defeat the evil that seeks to corrupt it and rot it away. And the greed outside that would seek to use it for its own ends. We got your back. Good then. And Custos turns, and as as the form flies towards this spider web of rifts and fissures where the tree branch is, it seems to dissipate, not like it's disappearing, but like it's spreading into everywhere and all of the fissures seem to glow white for a moment. And then you see where the branch that had been sticking out from this side, a little leaf bud forms and then makes a little flower. <laughs> and that's a good sign. And uh, Otterkey, you are now an Oath of the Ancients Paladin. <coughs> wow. Chooch is all like, I just figured out how to be this last one. <laughs> <laughs> Collecting them all. Used to be me, right. but... like Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, congratulations, you guys. Uh, <laughs> um, you. So, Custos is uh, now gone, but you. 
realize now that uh, you you have helped a tortured creature who just wanted to do good to find a way to do good <laughs> while helping you with your quest as well. We help. I could use a drink. Is there any part? So there's a part of the tree that's um, like within reach of me. Uh, yeah, so you would basically go around. So essentially, as I show on here, there's a place where the roots are growing through the wall and just just sticking into the where the, the these fissures are. Um, Amethyst wants to go and touch them. Okay. <laughs> I want to go touch the roots. All right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and take us back to the. Um, you know, the, the RP menu, since we're not really doing tactical map here, but I did want to show you the cool map that I found for this. Yeah. Race. That is so cool. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Man. Um, yeah. So, uh, you, you go and you see the branch and as you're looking at it, you know, you, you want to touch it, but for the first time, really, since you lost your memory, it feels actively familiar. Like you can remember standing in this place and making this branch grow. That's all for now, but it's there and it's real. And as you touch the tree, you feel the energy in this tree is still sleeping, but it's a less troubled sleep than it was. It's still not strong enough to grow all the way. It's still fighting off threats and dangers, but it's as if a weight has been lifted. So, Amethyst is going to look at the rest of her crew and say that, um, you know, I want to cast plant growth on it, but I'd like to cast it over eight hours. It'll enrich the tree, it'll enrich the land, it'll, it'll really give it a boost, I hope. <laughs> if the spell does what I think it'll do. Um, it won't cure it or fix everything but it's something that i would like to do is there any way that we can expend eight hours here well we do kind of need to take a little nap. yeah man if we're going to fight beasties and get yankee things then yeah we need to take a bit of a rest man is that but, like tapped out looks defensible i mean i got nothing i can't cast a mansion or nothing though man i'm exhausted i mean we have a whole city here so mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that we'll be okay. We could take watch and keep an eye over you and everything, but before we do that, I would like to go outside of the temple and see if anything's changed in the city. Of course. Okay. Uh, so you make your way out into the, into the city, and at first glance, you don't see anything visually different. But after, especially you, Cadence, because you're you're so sort of attuned to, you know, the world around you. And even though you don't remember this place, you feel its absence in your mind, almost like losing a tooth. You can feel where it was. And it aches a little, but you also realize that the air is not quite so stale as it was. There's nothing immediately apparent that has changed. The amber is still there, but there is a potential there now. Rather than 
a barren, scorched, you know, wasteland. It's more like flowers during the winter. It's waiting. I have no memory of this place. I thought maybe I would, but I... I remember nothing. We'll make new ones. They're always better anyway. I don't know. I mean, what we have to do, Archie, you made a new oath. If we go back to the dragon, would that mean that you have to break it? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I'll have to maybe give up more memories. Maybe I won't know why I took it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nothing says you have to get your price back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I don't want that. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, you know. You can keep it. For anybody to get anything back, we would all have to give up this, what we've done. So, I mean, you might lose this hope. Then we make new memories. Hell, Otterke's already made, what, three oaths now? You can make another. It's like a collector. Just two. Mm -hmm. Just two. You're like an oath collector now, man. <laughs> it's part of I'd like story. to think it's the same oath. It's just a deeper oath. It's a stronger oath. You renewed your vows. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, does that mean you're married to Custos? I'm gonna follow the no, 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 it's a, Archie and uh, Custos sitting more in the tree. Parallel <laughs> thing, not a together thing. Hey, not that there's you know, anything wrong know. with that. <laughs> well, it suits you. The change suits you. Does he look different, like vis visibly? Well, I. What do you think, Chooch? No, I don't think physically he would have really changed at all. Um, like his facial yeah. expressions and like just his but, general yeah, demeanor. definitely the demeanor because he had been uh he had been even before like he had given up the thing he had been super super pensive and really in his head a lot and then he just you know withdrew even more and now there's definitely kind of a lightness um yeah you're very shiny now <laughs> hey archie <Shiny. laughs> hey archie yeah Knock, knock. Who's there? Wah. Wah, who? Man, I know you're excited about this new oath, but you need to calm down. <laughs> I, I like that one. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. <laughs> See, look at this. We're all making new memories. That's right, man. <laughs> I hope that Mira is okay. Are you kidding? She's probably having the time of her life. Speaking of new memories, I'm sure mm. she's making some of her own. Hopefully She'll tell us all good. about it when she gets back, I'm sure. I'm and sure she, she, she will be back. Exotic land and just enjoying herself, probably eating delicious breakfast and seeing all kinds of sights. Huh? God, I miss breakfast. <laughs> yeah. I miss, I miss, I miss second breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> At least oh, we got the space. <laughs> uh, so far, everybody has come back. So, so I guess. You know, do, do we even want to talk talking. about what our what our next move is going to be? Or I wonder we what after we rest a bit. I wonder what would happen if we unleash the the god in a bottle on the gift you. Yeah. A lot of bad things, probably for quite some time. Yeah, you're right. 
That's probably well, it might, a bad it might idea. be an option. I'm kind of thinking we want to take care of that that itchy scratchy that's crawling around in the tree. Yeah. You mean yeah. The, bad, the, uh, mm. the fiend? There is yeah. something that's already coming to deal with uh, the Ginky, right? We don't know what it is, know. but it's definitely bad, and somebody thinks it can take them. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Gith Yankee might be easier to get on our side if we tell them that, you know, the tree is going to start growing again. Yeah. That well, is what your friend said, that they might be very persuadable. Because they basically want the same thing that we do. Yeah. But they're not going to be happy if we have to, you know, if it has rules. They're like, you can't use the tree on Fridays. You know, they're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> So what's wrong with Fridays? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, just because uh, I was reminded of the mechanic, uh, thanks to Smarter Master in chat, I'm actually giving all of you inspiration for that. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Thank Please. you. I think the last the time I was a fire or something. I can't remember. Maybe that's I... the first time you ever had the inspiration? Yeah. Oh. Well, make it work, baby. And it's, oh. Remember to use and it. it's for the tree. <laughs> yeah. 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 I always forget to give it because nobody ever uses it. Yeah, well, right. she had it for I a good have year and a half. It only, doesn't, inspiration only lasts for like 10 minutes, though. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Not this one, uh, baby. Yeah, so this oh, okay. is, uh, the, you know, I, even though they call it the same thing, that's a weird thing, but it's basically mm. just, it's a free reroll whenever you want. Yeah. Okay. That, that nice. only lasts for 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yeah. You got double inspiration, Archie, from my knock knock joke. You got ten <laughs> minutes. You got ten minutes of inspiration. <laughs> well, uh, you should thank uh, Smarter Master because I think it was his suggestion that the knock knock joke deserved inspiration that reminded nice. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, the the tree seems to, you know, so far have protected itself from without. I yeah. think we need, it still needs more help t to help protection and grow from within. Yeah. You know, it sounds yeah. like I think Amethyst is on the right track. So certainly spending that time, uh, uh, you know, letting her able to do that, I think is great. I don't I can, know that we need to rush back to the outside, though. I think I've had a toothache once. I can only imagine what this tree's going through. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So, uh, incidentally, uh, Otterkey, uh, you can still very much sense the hollowed ground feel of this mm. place, but now it feels warm and welcoming to you. Oh, nice. And uh, so you feel just kind of intuitively that, you know, the, the evil that you fear from outside can't reach you in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah, see that, that powerful power, powerful power. <laughs> <laughs> that powerful being had been here, lingered here so long. This is hallowed ground. It is protected from the evils. So, can I use my primeval awareness to sense um, the fiend? Uh, yes, and maybe the dragon too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I suppose I should tell you what she says. Uh, <laughs> you can. Yeah, I was just like waiting to see. Like, yeah, I wanted to see what Use it. Uh, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, you do still sense the the powerful fiend, uh, you know, in the, in the same direction approximately as before. I mean, it's a ways away from here. It's, you know, tw you know towards the edge of your ability to sense. Uh, but still there. Uh, the little blip that uh, you eventually figured out was Crux uh, is no more. Um, although I think only Alaric actually knows what happened there. For the rest of you, he just wasn't there anymore. Um, but uh, And then the dragon, you, you feel still, uh, it's a little ways off, though. It's not immediate okay. nearby. Okay. All 
So do we want to like maybe set up camp in the in the temple so that we can keep mm -hmm. an eye on Amethyst? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that would be wise. Yeah. A little piece would be nice. It takes yeah. eight hours, so someone could actually take a rest, or multiple people could take a rest. We could and, take like, we turns. Could do shit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh, Alaric, a, do you still have any any supplies left? Do you want to set any of your traps? Yeah, I don't think I have much of that left anymore. <laughs> Losing these bags of stuff. Yeah. Let's see. What do we get on me? Oh, not a damn thing. What do I have in the bag of holding? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't let's know. See. In the uh, the cadence holding the bag of holding number two, <laughs> we got jewels, my how to kill a demon lord book, two ounces oh. of catnip. <laughs> I roll around Deck cards, that. dice set, <laughs> <laughs> empty vials, four four sets of half plate armor, hooded lantern, ink and paper, some sandals. The scissors of dispelling, <laughs> some silver, a silver wand that can be used as a magic focus, and the staff of striking. Okay. So, uh, see, I think that you need to read that book, by the way. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I skimmed like, it. Like, Did he read that book? And you're never here when we wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I skimmed it. I had to put some time in, but yeah, I definitely need to put some more time in. I read it. Read the whole thing. Platoon, Quick. Virata. Nick, too. So, quick meta question for all of you. You guys reached a pretty good stopping point, but it's also a shorter than usual episode, so we could keep going if you want, whatever you guys think. I think it'd be a good stopping point and wait for Starla to get back next week. She won't be back next week. Yeah, she's, she's, she's missing oh. one, one more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either way, I mean, we're going to rest for eight hours, so I think it's a good... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rest, rest on your laurels. The the new laurels amethyst is growing up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think then we will we will uh, fade to black for this session as we watch amethyst. Um, so as you as you do this ritual, the plant growth, uh, you know, casting. Um, what what is uh, amethyst's demeanor? What is what does she look like as she's doing that? Um, so she has found a place. I don't know what the branch is, where it is, how high it is, how tall it is, but she's somewhere. She's just settled in in a hippie druid pose, just like calm and serene and just focusing on the tree and not thinking about what anybody else is doing. She's just mm -hmm. getting that full druid love going because she doesn't get to very often. All right. And uh, as everyone is kind of settling in, uh, what is Otterkey doing? Um, well, uh, really, <laughs> just contemplation, and uh, I guess it's more like a meditation, trying to find a new center mm -hmm. in all this. How about Cadence? Um, I walk by Archie, and I'm just like, read that book. And <laughs> I actually go over to the, the new growth of the tree, trying not to disturb Amethyst in her meditation and everything. And I actually reach out and I touch it. And I tell it, I may not remember where you're taking me, but I remember you. Aww. <laughs> How about Kat? Keth is just basking in the glory of his greatest knock-knock joke ever. <laughs> A great victory indeed has been won this day. <laughs> <laughs> and also you helped an angel. Uh, so how about Alaric? Um, probably staring out over the vista of this city. This is a pretty well-built city for a non-dwarf city. Uh, and uh, more cleaning than sharpening the axe. Um, just sort of contemplating you guys about the seriousness of what's yet to come. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will fade to a close there for tonight. Uh, good job, everybody. Uh, thank you, and uh, 
uh, for making this uh, a, a special episode. I sure enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and or watching. And we'll be back next week for more adventure on so, so many, many levels. levels. <laughs>